I thought since so many people asked me the same questions, I would sit down and do a little frequently asked questions video and answer all of the things that you guys would like to know. Things like how I started my bakery, how I funded it, what a typical day looks like as a bakery owner, the biggest challenges in owning a bakery, how did my bakery get so popular and exactly which video went viral, and all the things that you guys asked me in the comments section on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube. I'm going to answer all of those questions in this video. <clears throat> to kick things off, my name is Brooke. I own a bakery in Brisbane, Australia, and I opened that bakery about a year and a half ago. It is called Rookie Bakehouse, which is a play on my name. To be honest with you, when I first started the bakery, it wasn't very popular. It did take a little while to get popular, but now that it is popular, it's very popular, <laughs> which is very exciting, nerve wracking, exhilarating, anxiety inducing. There's just a lot of things that um, are all going on at the same time. But the most incredible experience of my life to own a business and also own a business that has gained such popularity so quickly. So in this video, I'm gonna answer all of the questions, give you as much insider information as I can on my bakery, my journey as a baker, and also on the baking industry. Okay, let's get started. I have a list of questions because I had to write these down. <laughs> okay, the first and most common question I get asked is how did you start your bakery? I opened the bakery a year and a half ago and what a lot of people don't know is this is my second bakery. It's not my first. So when I was 24 years old, I opened my first bakery slash dessert restaurant in the town that I grew up in. It's, I would say a reasonably small town. There's a hundred thousand or so people that live there. And it's called Launceston in Tasmania, which is a little island at the bottom of Australia. And what happened was I traveled the world for most of my twenties. I was traveling solo and I started this blog right at the time when Instagram was becoming popular and all the social media apps were taking off. And I think I was just in the right place at the right time, sharing in real time what it was like to travel the world in your twenties as a solo female. And so I built this audience very quickly on these platforms and that basically allowed me to travel longer because I didn't have that much money but by collaborating with brands and doing different things and writing on my blog and having AdSense and stuff like that I was able to make enough money to keep traveling for quite a long time. A few years after starting that I went back to the hometown that I grew up in and I was kind of getting tired of travel because as beautiful as it is and it's such a great education especially for someone in their 20s it also was very taxing and draining, not only on my physical health, but also on my mental health. I was really struggling not having a community, not having a group of friends and family around me. And so I decided I would move back to Tasmania, but I didn't want to just kind of go out and get a job. I wanted to work for myself because I'd been working for myself for a few years already. And I loved the freedom of being able to work whenever you want. Not in the sense of I wanted to work less, but it, quite the opposite. I loved working. And so I wanted to work for myself so I could work more than the legal amount of hours you can work a week. And so I started my own business and that was called Charlie's Dessert House in my hometown. The lessons that I learned over the few years that I owned that, so I owned that for a few years, I actually then passed on the baton to my parents and they still run it to this day. The lessons that I learned from owning that business, I kind of, to be realistic, it was really hard. And I said to myself, once I finished that, I would never work in, like I would never own a hospitality business again because it's, such long hours. When I first opened for the first few months, I was working. I remember I was sleeping five hours a night tops. So I think I was working, I want to say like six in the morning until about midnight, go home, get some rest, get up and do it again. And that happened for months. And then when that settled down, I was still working 12 to 14 hours a day for a really long time. So I always said I would never do this again. I went traveling again for a few years and then I came back to Australia and I was like, you know what? I think I want to do this again. Like I love owning a business. I love baking. I feel like I'm pretty good at it. Like I'm not the best, but I'm not the worst. And you know when you're just like, you find something you're genuinely super passionate about and you love doing it, that it never feels like work. That's what baking is to me. Like I will happily work 12 to 14 hours a day. It goes by so quickly when you're in the kitchen. 
and I just love it. I love baking, I love creating, I love inventing recipes. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do this again. So I moved to Brisbane, which is in Queensland, Australia, because I wanted to see the sun more. Um, where I grew up, it's quite gray and we have a really long winter. And then where I live now, there's not really a winter. There is technically, but it doesn't feel like winter to me. The sun is still shining. It's still like 20 something degrees Celsius. And where I grew up, it'll be like minus two or three or four. So it's like, it is really beautiful where I live. So I moved to this city with my now fiance and I was like, you know what? I want to open another bakery. And so my whole idea was I would put my name on this bakery because this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Like this was my last kind of thing. So that's how I opened Brookie Bakehouse. But I think there's two layers to this question. People also want to know how did you do it like financially? How did you get the money to do it? What happened was I traveled the world for most of my 20s. I was traveling solo and I started this blog right at the time when Instagram was becoming popular and all the social media apps were taking off. And I think I was just in the right place at the right time, sharing in real time what it was like to travel the world in your 20s as a solo female. And so I built this audience very quickly on these platforms and that basically allowed me to travel longer because I didn't have that much money, but by collaborating with brands and doing different things and writing on my blog and having AdSense and stuff like that, I was able to make enough money to keep traveling for quite a long time. A few years after starting that, I went back to the hometown that I grew up in and I was kind of getting tired of travel because as beautiful as it is and it's such a great education, especially for someone in their 20s, it also was very taxing and draining, not only on my physical health, but also on my mental health. I was really struggling not having a community, not having a group of friends and family around me. And so I decided I would move back to Tasmania, but I didn't want to just kind of go out and get a job. I wanted to work for myself because I'd been working for myself for a few years already. And I loved the freedom of being able to work whenever you want. Not in the sense of I wanted to work less, but it, quite the opposite. I loved working. And so I wanted to work for myself so I could work more than the legal amount of hours you can work a week. And so I started my own business and that was called Charlie's Dessert House in my hometown. To be realistic, it was really hard. And I said to myself, once I finished that, I would never work in like I would never own a hospitality business again because it's such long hours. When I first opened for the first few months, I was working. I remember I was sleeping five hours a night tops. So I think I was working, I want to say like six in the morning until about midnight, go home, get some rest, get up and do it again. And that happened for months. And then when that settled down, I was still working 12 to 14 hours a day for a really long time. So I always said I would never do this again. I went traveling again for a few years and then I came back to Australia and I was like, you know what? I think I want to do this again. Like I love owning a business. I love baking. I feel like I'm pretty good at it. Like I'm not the best, but I'm not the worst. And you know, when you're just like, you find something you're genuinely super passionate about and you love doing it, that it never feels like work. That's what baking is to me. Like I will happily work 12 to 14 hours a day. It goes by so quickly when you're in the kitchen and I just love it. I love baking, I love creating, I love inventing recipes. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do this again. So I moved to Brisbane, which is in Queensland, Australia, because I wanted to see the sun more. Um, where I grew up, it's quite gray and we have a really long winter. And then where I live now, there's not really a winter. There is technically, but it doesn't feel like winter to me. The sun is still shining. It's still like 20 something degrees Celsius. And where I grew up, it'd be like minus two or three or four. So it's like, it is really beautiful where I live. So I moved to the city with my now fiance and I was like, you know what? I want to open another bakery. And so, my whole idea was I would put my name on this bakery because this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Like this was my last kind of thing. So that's how I opened Brookie Bakehouse. But I think there's two layers to this question. People also want to know how did you do it like financially? How did you get the money to do it? For that first business, because I'd been traveling for a few years, like throughout my early 20s, 
I was traveling and I didn't have any overheads. I didn't have a mortgage. I wasn't paying rent because I was living out of a suitcase, staying at hotels. I wasn't really paying for those staying in hotels. I'd kind of, I feel like I kind of hacked the system a little bit. Like I said, right place, right time. And I didn't really have any expenses and I was getting paid to work with brands. So all that money that I was getting paid, these lump sums, I was putting in my bank account. And then by the time I got home, I had quite a lot of money sitting in my savings account. So that's how I got the initial money to start my first dessert restaurant. And then from there, I just kept building, like I bought my first home and then I renovated and then made a profit on that. And like, it just kind of snowballed. And yeah, by the time I opened Brookie Bakehouse, I had the funds sitting there and I was able to put all of the cash that I had into this new business and not take out a loan or have any kind of significant risk. Obviously, if it didn't work out and I couldn't make money out of it, I would lose money. However, I'm still very young and so I didn't have any real risk in the sense of I'm not paying for anyone else. I don't have kids or anything like that. So yeah. And what I will say about asking people how they started their own business journey is that you should never compare yourself to anyone else. I was in a very fortunate position. I'd saved a lot of money over the years and then turned that money into money and just kind of kept building on that. But it, that is certainly not the case for everyone. And a lot of people do get business loans or they do get investment or they go into partnership with someone else when they're going into a new business. So it is certainly not the only way to open a bakery. There's so many ways that you can and it's really dependent on your own circumstances and financial situation. I was very fortunate to be able to put my own savings into opening a bakery, but that also came with a lot of risk and on the flip side, it also came with a lot of control. Like I can make all the decisions for what I want to sell at the bakery, what hours I want to open. Like I have that complete control because it's 100% my business. How did you learn to bake? Well, the other question that gets posed here is what formal training do you have? I am entirely self-taught and I used to feel like have a bit of imposter syndrome about that and feel like I wasn't maybe as good as someone with formal training or um, not qualified to give my opinion or say anything. But I really feel like the world has changed so much and now a lot of people don't go down those traditional methods of going to school for a few years or going and doing an apprenticeship. Um, you know, there's lots of different ways that you can become a business owner or become a bakery owner or even become a baker. And it isn't essential these days to have formal training. In our team, two of our pastry chefs are qualified and then the other eight bakers are not qualified. They came to us with experience working in bakeries, but they don't have that formal experience. That said, they still need to have certain qualifications, myself included, um, food, health and safety and basic level things like that. But outside of those courses, more are unqualified than are qualified. So I don't think it's super essential that you have to be, you have to go through formal training. It really depends um, on your situation and also how you learn. I learn better hands on and doing things. So if I look at my cakes that I make now compared to the cakes that I made a year ago, they have improved so much over the course of that year. And the same goes for our cookie recipe, our brownie recipe, our cupcake, like all the recipes that I have and sell in the bakery today have been an evolution over the course of the last year and a half. And then even before that, all of the years that I was baking before opening this business, I've been building up my recipe repertoire and kind of adapting and changing recipes as I go along my journey. How did you become interested in baking? Very classic story here, but since I was small, I would beg my mom to bake her classic chocolate chip cookies with me. They were my favorite thing ever. I think I did definitely eat the beat, like lick the beaters more than I actually ate the cookies themselves. But I used to love baking those cookies with her. They're very buttery, very different to the cookies we sell in the bakery today. But I grew up loving those and making those with her. Also her jelly slice, like really traditional, classic kind of baked goods that are popular in Australia. Caramel slice, jelly slice, coconut ice, like pretty old school baking things. Recipes. 
What is the hardest thing about being a baker? I would say the hardest thing initially is to be on your feet for quite long days. I don't mind getting up early, but I say that now. I used to mind getting up early. I think it's quite, it becomes your normal to get up really early. I get up at four and then I'm at the bakery by five or six, depending on what day I have. But the hardest thing I would say originally is getting used to being on your feet all day. I am even wearing them right now. I have these shoes, Crocs, and I've tried every single kind of shoe. This is not sponsored in any way. This is just the shoes that I've been wearing. And I mean, these are like, the sole is coming off. I've been wearing these since forever, for years, since my first bakery. Um, so I've had these for like maybe 10 years now. And these are the shoes that I still wear to this day. So I think the key is to having a really good pair of hospitality shoes to wear in the kitchen and that would I would say that's the hardest part early mornings and really long days on your feet often not with breaks because there's just so much to do in the kitchen and it's it can be quite stressful what is your favorite part of the day my favorite part of the day is when I get to work first thing in the morning and I'm the only one there I love nothing more than walking into the kitchen. Everything is clean, everything is sanitized, everything's back in its place. And I say this because I'm a Virgo. I am very organized. I like to have everything very clean and color coordinated and back in its spot. And I think it's quite common for pastry chefs and bakers to be quite um, specific about where they like things being put. And yeah, having an organized space for me is like the key to success. So I love that first hour of the day when no one else is in the bakery, just me and everything's super clean before I go and mess it up. What does your typical day look like? My typical day at the moment, it does change a little bit from day to day. Also depending on the time of the year, depending on what staff um, we have, we've just built out the team quite a bit more than what we ever had before. So I am having less and less responsibility. Like when I first opened the bakery, I was working on the front register, making the coffees, baking the cakes, decorating the cakes, baking the brownies, cupcakes. Like I was doing everything in the bakery. And for a while I had one other staff member. Then that was only about a year ago. And then at the start of last year, so exactly a year ago, we started to become popular and that's when I realized we really need more staff and we really can't do everything myself and this one other staff member. So we started to hire more people and now we have each person who's kind of responsible for their own area. So we have a front of house manager, we have a barista who makes all the coffees, we have other bakers, we have a dedicated cake decorator now. So now that the team has built out I kind of float between different areas of the bakery, but I'm also more often than not working on all of the bigger picture stuff like product development and marketing campaigns and where is the business going and what, where are we going to open a new store? All those sorts of like higher kind of level things, which is very exciting, but those are the sorts of things that come with time. So I wasn't doing those a year ago. All I was doing is baking nonstop and now it's more the bigger picture stuff for I would say like a third of the day and then two thirds of the day I'm still in the kitchen doing different jobs. So a typical day for me right now, I wake up at 4 a.m. I answer emails and get back to, there's lots of projects that I'm working on behind the scenes as well. So getting back to, um, I have to be careful about what I say. Maybe, I feel like by now I probably can say this, um, working with my publisher and um, having meetings with my manager, like there's so many things happening behind the scenes that I'm very close to announcing. Um, so my day is, starts off writing back to all those emails, fulfilling all the tasks that I need to do before 5.30 and then I would leave to the bakery, get there by six. I The first thing I do is I bake off all the cookies for the day. We fill up all the trays with as many cookies as we can. And then the doors open at eight. Also, while those are baking, I'm icing all the cupcakes, cutting all the brownies, like doing all the jobs to get all of the treats in the front of the case. And then throughout the day, doing lots of different jobs. Some of those jobs can be hands-on, like decorating cakes, or maybe I'm back on the emails or photographing new cake styles. Like there's lots of different jobs and I'm always kind of jumping between different jobs.
Then at the moment I've been going to Pilates in the afternoon, which feels really great, but I, I don't always have time for that. It's like the start of the year, so I'm trying to make time for it. And hopefully those hobbies will continue throughout the year, but I'm to be realistic with myself, it's probably not, it's not gonna stretch beyond January. Um, but yeah, uh, by the end of the day, go to Pilates, have dinner, and then I'll be in bed by nine because I'll be back up at four. Yeah. What surprised you about becoming a bakery owner? Um, I would say what surprised me most was how popular the bakery became just from social media. I still can't wrap my head around it. It's very crazy and I'm so grateful and equally overwhelmed and overjoyed. There's just a lot of emotion because I genuinely love baking and I love being a business owner. So it's really the most exciting thing that's ever happened in my life. And yeah, I'm very grateful. What is the most challenging part of owning a bakery? I would say as a business owner, the most challenging thing is creating a really strong team and team dynamic. Company culture is super important to me, but I feel like speaking about company culture is, it's really easy to speak about it and express the importance of it. It's a lot more difficult on a micro level to implement that same company culture across every decision you make, every conversation you have with different members of your team. You're dealing with different personalities, different levels of skill, um, different availabilities. Like there's so many things that go into managing a team and as it gets bigger, that gets harder. So I think that's the most challenging aspect is putting that at the forefront of every decision, make sure that everyone's happy, but also the business as a whole is successful and the team is successful together, managing all of those different dynamics that are within a team. I think that's definitely the most challenging, but I do think that it's the thing that so long as you place it at the forefront of your values as a company, it can be, and I feel like it is for us, the strongest driving factor behind success is just to have a really happy, healthy team behind you. And that's something I'm really proud of because we have such a great team working with us and for us and they're just really talented and they're really passionate and they're really lovely. Like they're genuinely really lovely people. And as a team, as a whole, we all love each other. And yeah, that's something I'm really proud of. What is your favorite tool in the bakery? I would say the tool that I use the most is a piping bag. Pipe the cupcakes, pipe the macarons. Um, I love an ice cream scoop for scooping the cupcake batter. That's probably what I use the most, but I would say maybe my favorite is the mixer because I can't imagine life without a dough mixer. That would be really stressful. Hmm. How did your bakery get so popular? So what happened was I started sharing day in my life videos on TikTok. I was working by myself at the time. I had one other staff member forgot about that. I had one other staff member and she was sick for a few weeks. And so I was by myself every single day in the bakery. It wasn't popular. We didn't have like a strong foot traffic. It was so different to how it is now, but I was bored and I started filming behind the scenes of my days and making these little vlog videos on TikTok. And then they became kind of popular, I guess. And uh, one of them went viral and then People started coming into the bakery like the next week or maybe even a few days later and they were just saying like oh, I saw you on TikTok, wanted to support you, I think it's so cool, like seeing your days and then it just sort of spiraled from there. It was like the first person came in, a group of people came in early morning shortly after I started these videos and I was crying because I was so blown away and they ordered like over a hundred dollars of products and was so supportive and like encouraging. And then the next day, a couple people came in and the next week it was like maybe five people in the day and it was just building this momentum. And I was so excited and so grateful because finally we were getting some more sales. My delivery is here of boxes. I just got the most exciting delivery, this. New little merch update. And it's got a little brookie. Ah! 
Final question, what advice would I give to aspiring bakers and bakery owners? I would say to aspiring bakers that you can learn so much online. Find really great YouTube channels, um, people who are uploading stuff on TikTok. Like, there's so many skills that you can learn online just from watching videos and trying it yourself in your home kitchen. So I think there's just so much that you can learn online that you don't necessarily need to go to hands-on classes. However, I have done a hands-on class in Paris where I learned to make macarons. I also did a couple other ones. Um, one was in French actually, which was, <laughs> yeah, um, confusing to say the least, but it was also really fun. And there was so much to learn from the technical side of things because I was in the basement of the Ritz Paris learning from pastry chefs in French, don't speak French, had no idea what I was doing, but it was a lot of fun and I learned a lot visually. So I guess what I'm saying is you don't have to go to school to learn to become a great baker or pastry chef, but you don't have to teach everything yourself as well. There's some in between there where you can go to day classes, do like short courses online or hands-on classes in person for a couple of hours or maybe a whole day. There's lots of opportunities like that in pretty much every city around the world where you could do some hands-on classes, just day classes or learn online. I do have the bakewithbrookie.com where I share as many tips as I can in the Chunky Cookie Masterclass, the Macaron Masterclass, the Heart Cake Masterclass. So those are the three most popular best-selling items at the bakery. So I have masterclasses there where I teach you how to do that from home. And for aspiring bakery owners, my best piece of advice would be probably that you're only as strong as your team. In an industry like baking, where it's so hands-on, it's so labor-intensive, you physically cannot do everything yourself. If you plan on doing everything yourself, I think the best thing you can do is stay small and be a home baker and sell your goods, whether you're selling them online and people are picking them up or you're delivering them, but sticking to the home baker model if you want to do everything yourself. And that's what suits a lot of personality types. I used to think that was my personality type and I couldn't grow beyond that. But as I grew a bit older and matured a little bit more and understood people and what they need from me, not just what I need from them, I have come to learn that as a bakery owner, the biggest challenge but the most rewarding thing is growing a team of people who are just as passionate about you, about baking as you are, and that you're not the only person that loves this so much. There's so many other people out there. So build a team around you, build a community around you, speak to other bakery owners, be open and transparent with information. Like there's no point gatekeeping information about how to do something because you had to learn it from someone. So why not pass on that knowledge to someone else? So I think, yeah, community and building a really strong team around you is the best piece of advice I have for aspiring bakery owners. That's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If I didn't answer your question, please feel free to pop it in the comments below. And if there's another video that you want to see on this channel, more recipes, more baking tips, whatever you want to see on this channel, please let me know in the comments below. I'm so excited to get to know you all and share with you more of my baking and my baking business. I'll see you guys soon.